around him and he named the twelve that would become the apostles. <coughs> and then he makes his way down the mountain with his disciples and delivers what's known as the Sermon on the Plain. And so the sermon starts with this kind of in your face dichotomous teaching. And the layers of dichotomy are, are many. Jesus speaks of an earthly reality versus a heavenly reality. He uses present and future tense, this now and not yet. And then the obvious blessed and woe which can be also translated in the English language as unburdened or yikes. Jesus presents these contrasts that are anchored in the present and the future so that we sit up, we take notice, and change our behaviors sooner than later. It says, then he looked up at his disciples and said, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed or unburdened are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Unburdened are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Unburdened are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day. And leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe or yikes to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Yikes to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. And yikes to you when all speak well of you. For that is what they did, their ancestors did to the false prophets. So here's the uh, really friendly Cliff Notes version of what Jesus is saying. You ever use Cliff Notes at school? I do. Blessed or unburdened, satisfied are those that do not allow their earthly status, their power, or their possessions to get in their way of seeing and being grateful for how God works in and through our lives. Let me say that again. Unburdened and satisfied are those that do not allow their earthly status, their power, or their possessions to get in the way of seeing and being grateful of how God works in and through their lives. version really doesn't get our attention, does it? You go, yep, and you move on. Jesus wants us to stop and think about what he's saying. And so these verses that are in Luke's gospel at the start of this sermon on the plane are really a scriptural speed bump to slow us down, to make us stop and go, what are you telling us? He's wanting us to understand the difference between our human nature and God's nature, our earthly reality and our heavenly reality. Jesus wants us here as then and now to know there's a difference, a big difference between the contrasts that are presented and to make time to think and ponder about those differences and how we react to situations. So I said earlier that Martin Luther taught in dichotomies, law and gospel, free and bound, saint and sinner. It's in his teachings on this notion that we are simultaneously a saint and a sinner all at the same time. That comes from scripture texts like these. And that helps us to understand the difference of our nature <coughs> in God's nature. And the difference between our earthly reality and heaven's reality. So when Martin Luther said that Christians live simultaneously as saints and sinners, he's speaking of two truths that shape our lives. The first is that we are sinful creatures. We just are. We're capable of all sorts of evil. From gossip to lying, to stealing, and doing all the things the Ten Commandments tell us not to. The things that cause us to fail to live the life God calls us to live. 
our sin and makes us saints. It says in Romans 5, 8, but God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So through that sacrifice of Christ dying on the cross for us, we've been made righteous. We have been made right and justified in God's eyes. So in other words, we didn't earn God's love and kindness by any kind of holy behavior we try to do or good works, but rather in love and compassion God chooses to love us despite who we are, despite our faults and our failings. Our behavior doesn't make us saints. Instead, God's favor makes us saints despite our sinful behaviors. It's God's activity in our lives. So we are simultaneously saint and sinner. We are sinful nature and God's nature combined in us. And so we live in this tension. And it's kind of like this giant tug of war game in our lives. Jesus knows we live in this constant tension, this back and forth, and through these statements of blessing and woe, satisfied and yikes, Jesus is reminding us we're called in that tension to pull toward the saintly. God makes us into saints despite our sinfulness. And God doesn't want us to remain mired in the pain and our suffering of our earthly lives. In the midst of this tension, God wants to take our brokenness and reshape it into something beautiful. In love, God makes us righteous with a purpose. God is working to free us from the bondage of sin so that as saints, we might look, live, and love a little bit more like Jesus. While we're here and now, wants us to stop in our tracks, to sit up, take notice, and change our behaviors sooner than later. Our earthly realm is most certainly different than God's heavenly realm. Jesus turns our conventional understanding of our earthly understanding and our reality completely upside down. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. So Jesus urges his hearers, urges us to assess and reassess our lives in light of God's unfolding reign. He's already with us. He's come once. He'll come again. But his reign has already started. It's here and now. Just as his blessings and woes are in the present tense and future tense, he says, look at yourselves now. Look inward now. And so as you live in the world as both simultaneously a sinner and a saint, as one condemned by the law and freed by the gospel, remember that this is the tension for every single one of us. We all are living in this tension. Everyone faces that tension. So use that knowledge that we're all in it together. To look with compassion at others as they struggle, to celebrate with others as they succeed, and to recognize that though we are imperfect people, we are perfectly loved by God. And that allows us to do justice in the midst of others.
that our thoughts and our actions may be rooted and grounded in your love for us, and that we can use your love to receive your grace and mercy and extend it to the other, our neighbor, those in our midst. Lord, thank you for allowing us the time to stop, to sit up, to take notice that you are here with us and you are where we are going. We give you thanks on this day through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.